Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to day four of the Sightline Summit Week. We've had uh, three great days, and we're looking forward to a fourth great presentation by uh, someone probably many of you know, uh, someone who may be known as Mr. S- Mr. Sightline himself, Jerry Walden. And uh, Jerry's going to be covering the BI uh, solutions as well. So what we saw on Monday, we saw a, uh, a very strong offering for uh, Sightline 9 of what's going to be in the core product. Then uh, Tuesday we picked that up with the ION and the Mingle interfaces, being able to have a great business intelligence capability. Yesterday we covered the shop floor with uh, Sightline uh, Warehouse Mobility and the quality solution. Today we're going to pick that up, being able to gather all of that information that we covered over the past three days that uh, feeds into Sightline. And now we're going to be able to present that information with a business intelligence tool that is very easy to use and can really make make that data that you've collected from all the uh, various inputs into Sightline, turn that into uh, solid information, and ultimately, uh, when applying the human characteristic to that, turning it into uh, data or decision-making knowledge for you. So uh, you're going to be hearing from Jerry today. And by the way, don't forget to stay tuned uh, as well for tomorrow. We'll wrap that up with uh, Product Configurator. So, Jerry, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, enlighten us a bit on uh, Sightline Business Intelligence. Great. Thanks, Warren. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, today we're going to cover the Info Business Intelligence a couple different ways. We're going to do an introduction to you so that everyone's at a certain level of what the offering is for you. Uh, then we're going to go right into the, the demo. Uh, we'll go into various different products, different uh, ways of gathering information, different ways of viewing the information, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end uh, for that. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, what is in for Sightline BI? Well, if you've been in the been with us for years, um, like I've been with us, you know we've had other BI tools before, and it's uh, the concept is similar, we'll say that, uh, it uses OLAP technology, so it's like a Rubik's Cube still where you can slice and dice the data however you want. Uh, it will look at all aspects of Sightline across every, every one of your sites, and that's one of the, the keys to this BI tool is that it can look at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 sites uh, very easily within the way it is structured. That was a little bit more complex with our uh, previous tool, so that's a, that was a really nice improvement here for the uh, BI for Sightline. Uh, as with any BI tool, especially this one, you're going to be allowed to see how the data looks at different dimensions. What dimensions? Uh, dimensions could be dates. They could be um, quality measurements. They could be uh, how well your returns are how well your shipments have been, what your on-time status is, and so forth. Uh, one of the other areas I think is very important with this tool that you'll see with it is trending. How are you doing with that specific metric, with that specific dimension over time? Are you trending up, trending down, or staying flatline? Sometimes flatline is what you want out of a trend. Uh, but that is what you will see very quickly with how the different layouts are done within the BI tool for that. Um, now, the tools that are part of this BI tool are available for Sightline 803 and higher. So if you're on the earlier versions, uh, once you do an upgrade, you would be available then for this, the application that we're showing now. Of course, if you would go to the Sightline 9, you know, obviously that will all be there as well. Um, what is, and so what we're providing within, that, for, uh, within the cost of BI are 10 pre-built Sightline data cubes. This is similar to the prior BI tool that we had, uh, 10, 10 pre-built data cubes that you can manipulate, change, add, you know, if you have UETs that you want to add or additional uh, SQL tables and fields you want to add, you can do all that to them uh, and then regenerate them uh, with that new information, or uh, you can build from scratch your data cubes. But the data cubes is a, is a critical piece here. That is what the, the OLAP data cubes is what everything is based on for reports, for dashboards, and everything for that. So that, that's the key. You'll all, we'll also deliver four pre-built dashboards for you. 
uh, ranging from you know finance all the way through operations and so forth. And we'll show those uh, dashboards and cubes, uh, especially the dashboards. will use the use reports, pre-built reports, and there will be 24 over 24 different reports already pre-built for you. So as soon as you load the software, you will have four dashboards in operation uh, once, it, once the data cubes have been generated. And the data cubes can be generated at a background routine and so forth uh, for that. You don't have to generate those during business hours if you do not want to. Um, now, what are the different elements of the tools? Well, the entire BI solution is based on an OLAP server concept. OLAP server is what is going to be used to generate the cubes from all your different databases, all your different sites for that, based on whatever cubes you want to utilize for that. Um, one of the tools that you can use for representation of the data out of those cubes is um, it's called Application Studio, and there's a piece for this called Application Studio for the web, uh, all, all your users would use is a web browser, logged on, and they would have their, their reports, their cubes, and so forth to be able to access, be able to manipulate within that. There's also going to be uh, another tool that generates the actual uh, cubes themselves onto the OLAP server, and that's called Import Master. Import Master is the tool that looks at the various data sources allows you to map that information into the data cube that you want to utilize, like UETs or extended tables and so forth, into the new data cube or extend the current data cube. Once that, once that relationship is built, Import Master then has another, it has a job queue that will generate the data out of the different database, out of the different SQL databases into the OLAP cube and then It'll be available for reporting, uh, dashboards, and so forth. But that, that's really the key to the admin person of the BI tool, is, is managing the import master for that. Now, uh, there's a little subtle point here, and it's, and it's a pretty good point. Um, import master can utilize any data source. So we can use the Ion Vault, which is coming for Sightline in the future, you, today, you can use the import master uh, to set up any kind of connection to any data source. So, of course, the pre-built one is looking at the Sightline SQL application. But if you wanted to look at an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV, you wanted to look at an Oracle database, you want to look at uh, you know, any other kind of ODBC compliant database, it will utilize that. It can use progress as well. Uh, to utilize and pull data in. Of course, when you do pull in those data sources, you'll need to map all the fields and so forth using the import master for that. But it's an important point to realize it's not just only for the Sightline databases. The prior uh, BI tool, that was the arrangement we had, is that it had to be utilizing the Sightline databases. So that's a nice open-ended open tool for that. Now, um, another user interface, uh, and I'll show this as well, is uh, if you're an Excel person, uh, you really like Excel, maybe your financials or you're, you just have a, you know how to work pivot tables and so forth, uh, the BI tool is fully immersed inside that with an add-in to the Office application for Excel. You can then utilize that. You can look at any of the cubes uh, that you have, of course, security over that you can go in and instead of using the standard tools from Info, you could use uh, Excel for your presentation of the data. And we'll show that, show you how to do that. Now, probably the most highly used piece of this, uh, and I still think it's probably going to be the most utilized piece for your end users, is the dashboard. Because the dashboard is very straightforward, very easy, easy to use. Uh, you can actually create your own dashboards on the fly, and I'll show you that, um, utilizing any of the standard reports or any custom report that you've built for that. So all of that is part of the dashboard feature. It's got a very nice UI. It's the exact same charting mechanism 
that Infor uh, Mingle is using, as well as Infor Sightline is using for Sightline 9. So it all looks and feels the same for your users for that. So those are the components in essence of it. Now there's one final piece, and that's Application Studio, the uh, client piece. That is what you would use to build brand new reports from scratch. And once you've built your own reports using the tool and you hit save, they are then available for Application Studio for the web, Office Plus, as well as dashboards for that. And we'll go into it, keep going. So the idea with Import Master, and this is more of an admin function, uh, is to take the data out of all your various Sightline data sources, you know, in essence, sites. Uh, and if you're utilizing multiple sites, uh, there's a, a tool that Import Master looks at. It's just, a, it's just a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet of all the listing of all your sites so it knows how to transform the data from those various sites into the analysis cubes. So it's a very straightforward process of setting up multi-site for that. Um, the actual tool itself allows you to see the, the left-hand side is always the sight line side. So you'd see all your fields uh, available as well as all your user fields that you've added. Then you can just go one-to-one, -one, map them straight into the cube. Or in some cases, a lot of these are the measurement fields. You bring them in do formulas, you can maybe add a specific formula or add two or three fields together to get a summary field that would be like measurement of inventory analysis that is built up of a series of fields out of sightline. So it, in that case, it is somewhat similar because the other tools had that feature as well, but it's, just, uh, but it's still available in this framework, which is nice. Uh, then the final result then will be all of your cubes that you'll be able to access uh, through the other UI tools, uh, either Application Studio to build reports against those uh, cubes or after the reports are built and the other, you know, the dashboards and so forth that we'll be showing. Now, what are the actual cubes that we have delivered with this product? You can read them. Uh, AR all the way down to vendor received. They're very similar to the prior version. Um, but it'll come fully multi-site enabled for every one of these. And I think that's a, that's a nice differentiator for those. Um, the four dashboards cover finance, inventory purchasing, manufacturing, and sales. Um, we're going to go through these. Uh, you'll also see when you're in the dashboards, you'll be able to access them, as well as at the bottom, be able to create new dashboards as well for that. Just a quick view of uh, one of the dashboards will go in here, don't worry, uh, those are just screenshots of another, uh, this is the, uh, the product contribution margin one, the financial uh, one for, uh, that comes out of the dashboard for that. You can have your P&Ls, business trending, revenue trending, uh, your top 10 receivables by accounts. Uh, and so forth within that. Uh, now, there is another application, and you can do this today just to see what it looks like. You can go out to the Apple Store and you'll see within Infor, uh, the BI tool is also available for the iPad. So you have full gestures, full able to create on the fly using all the standard features of an iPad. And it's built directly for the iPad. And I think that's an important note because we've noticed a lot of our customers going towards those type tools for presentations to their own people, or of course utilizing those when they're on the road discussing information with prospects, customers, and suppliers for that. All you would need, of course, is a Wi-Fi connection. And that's it. That's the overview uh, for the BI. Let's just go right into the product. A couple different ways we can go right into it, I think, but I think the best way is we're just going to go right into the uh, dashboards for that. Let's go ahead and look at the first, now when you open up any of the dashboards, and you can open up in any standard browser, or uh, in the future you can use the InforMingle. Now, when you open up either Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever, or Mingle, you will have an option to be able to see uh, the dashboards. Uh, first dashboard here is just a sales contribution dashboard where you would see your sales reps, uh, the channels that you're within, 
Uh, all of this is coming out of your, your sightline application, uh, broken down by quantity ship and so forth. Uh, you'll see trending. Uh, these are kind of, this is a unique uh, proprietary piece. It's actually unique to our BI tool. Uh, miniaturized 12 months periods uh, going through here, well, you'll be able to see if you're trending up or down on product contribution margin or quantity shift on any given product. Um, and, of course, you'll have the ability to go to any date, any year. Uh, we go to 2011, whatever. That will re reshape the uh, information for that. Um, we'll go that way. And now let me see if I'm getting uh, displays. There we go. So you can also use your individual sites. Uh, to see all the various sites that you have, and you can drive into the different sites, like say Dallas. Uh, you could go into any of your European, whatever, whatever sites you have set up. LA uh, to redo the numbers for that. You can do your channels. Um, I don't know. Let's just do all of sales channels for that. Um, and that way, then the tool is is following along with whatever your options are. Now, if you want, on the left-hand side is where your menus, your navigation is going to be. The reports are underneath the Sightline BI, additional dashboards that you've either created or that are, we have built for you are within here. So let's go, let's try our financial dashboards. Um, and it will load up those, all those reports into its own dashboard. And what the heck is a dashboard? A dashboard is just... Uh, what's the easiest way of thinking of that? It's just your desktop and laying on top of the desktop multiple reports. However, there is a little nuance. Those, all those reports are connected by common measurements across those. So if you do change a measurement uh, on any of your filters, it would impact all of the charts automatically uh, without you having to do anything besides just build your own dashboard. The system will do that automatically for you. Um, like if I went and said, um, well, we don't even have to do the years. We'll just say uh, site on this one. We'll say instead, well, let's just do the LA site. Uh, just those charts that are tied to the site, which was the P&L, top 10 customers, and, top, and outstanding receivables, changed if you guys noticed that. So that is how the measurements behind the scenes is something you don't have to worry about, but if it finds the same measurement in all of those, it will allow that automatic change to happen. So if I just go back to, uh, say, all sites, it will redo just those three, and then you're there for that. So. Um, that's exactly how they work. Now, you, there's the ability to do full drill downs into other charts. This one I'm currently on does not have that, but you can take any of these and drive down into the data below it uh, for that as well if you, want, if you want your users to do that. You get full control over where you go whenever you do a drill down, whether it's a PowerPoint or another report or whether it's accessing directly the Sightline application database for that. Now, how these things are built uh, are underneath the BI tool, and that's where all your reports are. So if we go underneath here, you'll see, uh, and we still broke it down by the categories of the, of the dashboard. So if we went into, um, I don't know, let's say manufacturing, you will see not just a, a, a dashboard, but you'll see all of the, all the reports that make up a potential dashboard. These are the ones your admin person has built for you or you have gone out and built your own custom report and saved them to your menu. You would see all of those reports listed out here for that. So if you just wanted to run one of these like standalone, all you have to do is just you know, click it and it will run it, but it only is going to run that individual report, as you can see. And then if you had drill downs, you could drill down into that and so forth. Um, which is all great. Now, what we can also do, however, is take various reports and build new dashboards with them. So, and these could be your custom reports or the standard ones that come. So, when you go to the dashboard, there's an option down here called New Dashboard. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click that. And what it does is it creates an open palette 
and you're now, these buttons on the right hand side come into play, one to edit, save, uh, or you can do refresh, and then there's all sorts of different options down here that helps you kind of draw these reports in, as well as set your language that you might, may or may not want to use for this. This would come out of strings database. Uh, you could change passwords on this, and there's the connections are how we share information across your reports. So anyways, that would be all covered in the training. Uh, so your palette is open. Let's go ahead and grab some reports and start and create our first dashboard. Let's, oh, you know what? Let's grab that, uh, I think it was a scrap quantity. Let's just grab that guy. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Let's go back. <laughs> I didn't go in and drag it over. You'll see what I'm talking about here. So let's go back in and uh, just grab it and you move it over. And then that then starts building your first dashboard. We can maybe move him up here, well, whatever. Um, and let's grab another one. Let's grab some financial mat, um, information. So let's go into finance and grab, uh, let's grab business trends. That's a good one. Grab business trends and then we'll go back in here. Let's say uh, out of the sales uh, area. Let's go, uh, let's do the product contribution margin uh, ones, and let's say sales by channel is good. We'll grab something out of every one of them. What the heck? Uh, and let's go into the inventory purchasing. Let's see what reports we have out of there. Uh, we'll just say cost by ABC code. That's a good one. Now, when you get your reports in here, and of course it's, it's as big as your dashboard is, or if you're using the iPad, as big as your Surface on your iPad, um, there's ways of making these a little bit cleaner looking. Uh, you can do it manually, uh, but once you have them in here, uh, you can go in um, and then go in and actually, um, let me go in here and do the, uh, I don't want to do the interaction with that. Uh, I want to do the, my, alignment tool, and my alignment tool is not coming in, but that's okay, whatever. Uh, let's move this guy over here a little bit. Uh, and we got that aligned, uh, and let's move him up a little bit. I have my alignment tools for some reason. I'm not accessing those guys right now, but that's okay. Uh, but anyways, you can move these around, align them, uh, get them exactly the way you want to see them. And then once you're done, you just come out of design mode, and you kind of created your own, your first dashboard on here. And that's, that's what you would do. And you hit save, uh, and you would call it, uh, man, put in the public dashboards is fine. We'll just call this uh, uh, my first dashboard, whatever, uh, for that. So, uh, and that's it. Click OK, and you've got it. So now that's going to be saved in the public dashboards. You can do a local dashboard or public. A local, of course, would only be accessible by yourself. A public could then be utilized uh, by other users who have that same security over these. Uh, that is really, in essence, the main piece of the dashboard. There's going to be other areas uh, will allow you to build your own widgets within here. Uh, the one thing you won't be able to do within the dashboard is build a report from scratch. You have to take the existing reports that have been built for you or that you've built for others or they, you know, and so forth. So you can construct your dashboards, you can construct your filters, you can construct any new widget within here, uh, and then hit save and share it amongst your people or only for yourself. That's either way. So that's the dashboard option for it. Now the other one I think is important and relevant to a lot of our Sightline users since we're so office-centric uh, with the Microsoft tools is to actually use um, Microsoft Excel for that. So when you do install the add-in for the BI Office Plus for your client or for your users uh, who are using Excel, They'll have this option. They'll have all these different tools up here to utilize to do kind of what we just did on the dashboards uh, within an Internet or a, a browser session. You can use outstanding reports for this, 
or you can use your catalogs to build a new view. And then as we did with the dashboards, you can, of course, uh, save those and reuse them in the future or share them with others. So let's just go ahead and do, um, let's do the sales uh, and product contribution margin. And all I did was just double clicked on that cube and it opened up the information for that, the default information for the cube. So if you've not seen these type of tools, you'll see that the, you know, the columns going to the right are all your information for uh, the display of the measurements. Columns going down are, you know, what do those measurements pertain to uh, for that. So up above are your, all your options that you can slice and dice with the data for this. So, you know, if you wanted to quickly do and say change sites, you can just up, you know, click the site button in Excel and then say, you know what, let's just use Dallas, okay? And it just redoes the data in that. If I wanted to do, uh, you know, London, uh, I could do that. And then it would, you know, show me just London's facilities. Or if I wanted to go back to all of them, you know, click off of that, click on all sites, and you have that. And that's, that's just really quick for that. Anything inside Excel, you can convert this thing to a, a live Excel report and then put all your formulas and everything inside it. Uh, but to clean this thing up, and I don't like a lot of zeros in here, we have some options for you. There's a suppression option where you can say suppress zero and empty rows. That kind of cleans it up a little bit for you on that. Uh, you can also just, you know, use the double click and drive down into specific categories or not, bring it back up. You can then take in and say, um, you know, let's just say if we want to, you know, grab a uh, metric and we want to just move it down, we could move it into the product category. So you can see all your products uh, by product contribution, quantity shipped, and so forth. Pretty busy, but it does give you uh, all of your information for that. Uh, now, if you don't like that, you can just pass it back up, uh, get that out of there, uh, and then replace it with sales channels maybe. So you can see it that way with all products by sales channels. The same kind of concept, but this is a slice and dice tool where you're kind of seeing how you want to rotate the data around in that virtual Rubik's Cube. Uh, if you do like um, different presentation types, maybe a chart and table, depending on your version of Excel, you could do it this way. I don't, I'm going to do, uh, let's do the uh, chart and table. I kind of like to have the chart on top. Um, and then if you want, you can change your chart types, the bar, pie, area, whatever makes better sense to you on this uh, type application. Uh, you can also use the right-hand side as another navigation tool as well. So if I wanted to go over here and say, uh, just show me uh, the direct information, um, you know, we could do that and we could do the apply and just see what it looks like with just the direct or, or not. You know, we can go through and apply all the directs for that. You can see down below all the different children. There's filtering that's allowed in here. You can build your own filtering, change the attributes that you're using within here. Uh, all of that is available. A little bit of training goes, you know, you would have the full knowledge. As you can see, it's, it's not going to take you long to learn it if you're an Excel person for that. And if you want, you can always convert this report. Uh, right into Excel, so it'll go ahead and create this, and then you're, you, know, you can do whatever you want with this. You can add all your formulas into Excel, add other information from other sources into this, uh, which is, again, you're in Microsoft Excel, so you do whatever you want with that, along with the full power of the BIO Lab tool within it. So that's that, in essence, is the two major tools uh, that we would utilize for the BI experience for your end users. Um, on other sessions or training, you'll, we'll talk more about the Import Master, uh, the Application Studio, how to write reports. But for now, that, Warren, that is the, uh, that's the coverage of what we like to present to our users uh, for the Infor BI tools for that. Excellent. Well, excellent, Jerry. Thank you very much. And uh, I think we've got uh, definitely some, some fantastic capabilities here 
um, pulling that information really into uh, something that can be uh, used in decision making as we see. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to the operator here for a call for questions. And uh, so operator, if you would do a call for questions, please. Okay, at this time, I'd like to remind everyone in order to ask a question, press star one on your telephone keypad. Your first question comes from Bill, ba Bill from CF Martin. Your line is open. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, we were going to ask a question uh, regarding um, prerequisites for other modules to use BI. Is, is ION specifically, is ION a requirement? Because we see it again and again in the... Uh, it, yeah, on this, Bill, on this first release of ION, no, it is not. This is actually being direct connected to the BI tools. But in the next go around with Sightline, we'll offer either either way. It'll be uh, coming out of the Ion Vault or direct connect to the um, to the using the Import Master. So today it's not using Ion. Okay, thanks. You got it. Your next question comes from Jim with Rust Master of Texas. Your line is open. Jim. Good morning, Warren. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. Uh, when uh, you, you, Jerry, you spoke earlier about uh, being able to do drill downs uh, into this tool. When you do that, uh, can you do it either from a chart or from a table? And when you do a drill down, what what do you see? Do you go directly into Sightline, or do you or do you see a, a grid of data that's pulled from the from the uh, OLAP database? A great question. You uh, when you're using and it is you're utilizing the Application Studio to build your drill downs. And Application Studio allows you to go to any data source for the drill down information. So you could, the answer is really yes to all except for drilling you back into Sightline. Everything but drilling you back into Sightline. So you can, you can see it in a grid list of the data coming directly out of the Sightline database. You could go into another chart, so you go chart to chart, or you could go from table to table. You go from table to chart or chart to table or, or a listing of, say, the actual invoices that made up that AR balance. And that would not come out of the OLAP cubes. That actually could come directly out of your different sites for that. And that's, that's all designed within Application Studio for that. Okay. Yeah. How, how frequently uh, do the data in the OLAP uh, database get refreshed from, from the Sightline database? That's a great that question. So you, right now we have, you know, the, uh, I think, what was it, how many uh, cubes? I forgot, it was 10 cubes uh, for that. So each cube that either you build yourself or our standard ones has the ability to put a job queue on that. Now that job queue allows it to be hourly, uh, daily, uh, weekly, biweekly, monthly. I don't think we have a quarterly option on that, but it, it goes to monthly. So you have the ability for any of those cubes to kind of fine tune how frequently you want that information, uh, you know, to be recalculated. Okay. Yeah. Down great. To, Thank you. I think it's down to 10 minutes right now. To, to run the entire refresh process? Yeah, to run the refresh process and to run it uh, for each individual cube. I don't know if I, I know of anyone doing it that frequently, but you could start up that job queue like every 10 minutes. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Okay. Your next question comes from Andrew with the Bradbury Company. Your line is open. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Thanks for, for this. My question is, do you have to have a different server to host this uh, BI, or where does it reside exactly? Yeah, um, depending on your current uh, capacity availability on your servers, um, this application can be loaded directly on the existing servers for that, but if you're uh, and I know the guy that will do all the architects for this, Chris Craner, who reports to me, he'll, he'll work with you on that to see where your current servers are on utilization and what's currently loaded on them. But it does not require its own server, first of all. Uh, it can sh be shared with other applications uh, on that server. It's going to be more of a, a question of where, where, what is your server currently at in capacity. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, if I may ask, can I ask another question? Yeah. Is is that per server license or per user license? Or if this is connected to Sideline, does it consume a license from Sideline? It, it does not consume a license from Sightline. Uh, and Warren, if I'm I'm trying to get the uh, the pricing, I believe uh, is named is named user licensing. I believe that's correct. AI tool. Isn't it named, Warren? Yes, I believe that is correct, Gary. Okay. Yeah. I don't believe uh, there might be a site uh, initial site chart, but it's more named user than anything else. But and and the key is, is it does not use up any uh, of your sightline user licenses. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Your next question comes from Amy with HP Performance Systems. Your line is open. Hi, I have two questions. Number one, does this product have a data mart? functionality so that I can go back and look at data at any specific point in time, or is it merely based on whenever I last refresh? That's the first question. And the second question is, is can you show how easy it is to create a custom queue? Uh, the first, the first, we won't have, first, second, we will have to do that as a follow-up session for you, to build the cubes uh, for that. Um, the first one is, it actually, uh, we can store the cubes by date for that. Most of the people are doing is it actually can, can do it two ways. One is maintain the data that's already there and just do an additive to the cube. So you'll always have the trending information over time within your data marks, and that's really what we want you to try to go to. So that way you'll always have the data for four years ago, eight years ago in there, but obviously we don't want to have to reprocess that every single time that we do that. Or if you have removed the data out of there, uh, out of Sightline, but you still want to have it in your analysis queues, we don't want to refresh that either. So the, the concept then is when, we're, when you do the refresh with the import master, we want to do an additive approach. So keep what was there, and then add whatever new has happened since the last time you refreshed the cubes. And that's the approach we're going with. Now, there is going to be also an option that says refresh everything. Just remove all the data out of all your cubes and rebuild it with whatever the data sources have in their tables for that. So hopefully that answered your so, first question. Okay, so just let me bring it down to a really simple level. If on January 1st I have 10 pieces of widget A, mm -hmm. and on February 1st, I go down to six. Mm -hmm. Come June, can I look and see what the inventory was on January 1st and on February, or will I only be able to see whatever it is as of June 1st? No, no, that, that's one of the key aspects of this tool is to do trending. We will maintain that January, February, March, April, May, and June inventory transactions within this. That's until you do a refresh, though, correct? Yeah, until it, well, it's, it's two different ways. Um, if you've gone into Sightline and removed all your inventory transactions, because Sightline in this, now I don't know what version of Sightline you're running, but in 803. 803, well, you're there. Uh, 803, we have the ability to store inventory beginning and ending balances and transactions in between. Uh, so we will always know what the ending and beginning balances for every one of your months. Oh, okay. However, however, you have the ability with our utilities to remove all your data. So if you remove all your data, then when you do the refresh of cubes, we will not be able to process that, of course. So it's, it's good as the data that you maintain in your data or in your sites. But since we do that, we do recognize beginning and ending balances in inventory. Um, a lot of our customers are not removing their in, their information for at least one to two years. Sure. And we didn't even know that that was an option. Is that a specific form inside of Sightline that you see your beginning and ending? Yes. There's certain reports like uh, inventory value report, inventory um, valuation. Uh, those the I think there's two or three standard reports that run that run that view. Okay. There's also some screens too. That you'll see in there as well. Okay, we'll contact Sightline directly now. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be my team that'll actually probably show it to you. Okay. For that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so are you guys planning on doing a follow-up to show how cubes are made? We're currently a Cognos 
uh, customer. Yep. And um, well, you can imagine it's not as simple in Cognos, so that's why. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? I know the Cognos tool inside and out as well. Uh, I was with it when we originally did it back in the 90s, um, and I would say right now the Import Master tool is somewhat similar to the uh, the Transform tool. And that, that how you point to one value to the next. Um, I thought it. I thought it was easier, in a sense, to build the formulas uh, with an import master. But the overall structure is similar to other OLAP tools like Cognos. The how you point it to two different. You know, the one is the data, the data cube, and the other one's the source. Uh, it is somewhat similar in that, and it is an admin function. It's, we're not going to say that's an end user function. Okay, thank you. Okay, and that's something we, my team can do, or we'll get someone from our, you know, if it's something we want to bring one of our BI experts to, we can do that as well to show you. Yeah. Okay, your next question comes from Ashwin with BWIR. Your line is open. Yeah, hi, Jerry. Hello. 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 Uh, Hello. Uh, one question I have in my mind is, uh, do we how to customize the cubes based on customer forms? And second is if there is a customized personalized form based on sideline as per any requirement from customer, how to pull those uh, reports in BI? Uh, if you've done so, one, uh, if I understand the question correctly, how can I customize really this application uh, instead of just using the standard cubes? Is that the first question? Yeah. yeah. So yes. we allow, uh, of course, we deliver all these standard cubes. The standard cubes are open-ended. They can be tailored however you want. Now, as a good business practice, as with the Cognos tool, we would recommend you rename the cubes in case you wanted to take, uh, you know, take our upgrades on this and keep building up uh, and just make, make certain that the standard cubes are always the standard cubes. So you can always take any of the cubes, rename them to your whatever you want to call them, and then adjust those to however you want. So uh, the actual import master is the tool uh, that will be utilized uh, to tailor them. So inside Sightline, you're gonna, it's a two-step process. You go inside Sightline, add the customization or personalization inside Sightline, whether it's, um, you know, adding a couple of different fields or adding maybe a derived field that has a calculation or whatever it is. But once you impact the schema in Sightline, then that updates the Sightline database. At that point in time, when you go back into Import Master, you will see those additional fields within here. But they're not going to be connected. You can see like this, adjusted unit cost is not part of the inventory analysis as your new custom fields would not be either. So you're going to do a right-click add measurement on this column. Once you've added that, then you have to say this, this, this value connects to this value. Now you can, the tool also allows you, very similar in Cognos, where it's a right-click, do all new fields and, and map those automatically or try to do your best to add the values over here in your cubes. And then it would automatically connect them for you. You might not like that, um, so you might have to disconnect some of them, and then all it is is highlighting that line, right-click, delete, and then reconnect the value. Or maybe you do a, you do a value in, inside the normalizer, and you, you do a calculation with that value, then you push it into the field over here. But it is there are that, that's two step process to do that. So you do it inside Sightline. Once the values are inside Sightline, you open up Import Master. Your new values are in here, based on those areas of Sightline that you personalize. Then you have to reconnect those new values inside that cube to whatever you want to call those measurements in in the OD, in the OLAP cube. And at that point, then, Import Master, when it regenerates the cubes, it'll use those new values that you've entered in as your customization or personalizations in Site Sightline. That's the steps that you'd have to go through for them. 
okay okay and uh, how do we deploy this it will automatically if i connect this uh, personalized table yeah. personalized field with uh, this cubes standard tube yeah. cubes it will automatically deploy on the server or need to do any other activity for it no you will all you would need to do is just set uh, you do a right click set up job queue to say yeah run okay. update this every monday or every day at uh, 6 a.m. or whatever now once you but but now now all, what you've done now is you've created a, a a custom cube or you tailored an existing cube and again remember i would say like sales underscore deliver underscore whatever your site or your name of your company is over here abc uh so that it's different than a standard delivery analysis cuz we're going to want to deliver new cubes to you with new functionality in the future but so you would have your cube there but obviously there's no reports out there for that so you would want to go into existing reports and bring those new fields into those reports or go in with application studio and build a new report from scratch for that okay and that's something we haven't shown we haven't shown the application studio we can do that on your on your do that as a follow up webex for your company or whatever for that my my comp my okay. uh, do that yeah okay thanks very much thank you very much got it very good thank you go ahead please okay, your next question comes from debbie with duramax marine your line is open hey good morning debbie hi jerry um debbie. i have a, i have a couple questions Yeah. Um first a real quick question about um what you were just talking about. Um how how would you set up a join? I mean, does it prompt you and say do you want an inner join or an outer join or The join would have to be pre-done going into this. Yeah, so you already would have done the joins within Sightline with okay. uh, an external table. You know, have you done that yet with uh, the SQL tables? Uh no, but we we've, we've done some customizations to our uh catalogs for Cognos, so Okay. Or actually it's now IBM. Okay. Uh so yeah, yeah. Um so you would you could do either do the uh joins, you could do the joins in the tool set and if if you do that within this in the import master, uh we'll show which ones are keyed, primary and secondary keyed values. we would highly recommend you doing the joins in the cubes based on those key values for that the the prior question though was at least i interpreted as using the sql table features of sightline which allows you to do the joins within sightline so those joins would already be there when you came into the bi tool for that but if the, these are join these are just tables sitting out there like maybe you, i don't know you have data outside of sightline that you want to bring into one of these standard sightline cubes or you know you take in the cube and you've adjusted it you want to bring in uh, two or three other database tables yes you would have to use the import master you have to use that to join those tables with the existing data cuz this this right hand side has to recognize all the data joins from the left hand side prior to coming in here so there's another piece when you when you do the joins you have to go into and it's it's like an excel uh file builder that looks at you know this table equals this table these values these values similar to the the cognos tool for that okay and um... it's similar it's not i'm not going to say it's it's much easier but it's it's similar. Um yeah cuz we we joined with <clears throat> invoice information in with sales information. Okay. Cuz we do our analysis on invoicing. Okay. Um so my next question is is the licensing okay. is it transferred from people who have licenses for the um IBM the Cognos? Yeah. Uh there is uh Warren and I don't know if you know that date. I think it goes to there's a date that we have uh that allows all customers to do that with. Yeah, I didn't Jerry, I don't have the date exactly in front of me here to uh to call yeah. with, so we'll have to follow back up on that. Yeah, so Debbie, uh who's your uh, sales person you've been dealing with or is it a partner? 
Uh, I don't remember. Okay, uh, that they'll they'll give you what the current program is. There is a there was a there was a program I know throughout this summer yeah. for conversion of the Cognos product into the Sightline M4BI for that, so you could do that conversion. Um, but I thought there was a date on it. I'm sorry, I should have had that date for you on here. Um, sometimes we actually, when we do these presentations, we'll have the sales reps here too because they have all the more frequent pricing updates and program updates. But that's something right. we it, Yeah, if you would uh, go ahead and send a note to Dinah Gratis, and uh, Dinah is offered to uh, host any of our follow-up uh, questions that we have. Or I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, great. Debbie, Debbie you coming to, to Columbus? Well, duh. <laughs> Wait, that's almost like a suburb for me. Yeah, I was hoping you would be here, but yeah. Um, the, the other question, last question I have is, you know, with with the current BI that we have under 802 and below, um, there are basically three different products. There's Impromptu, yeah. there's PowerPlay Explorer, and PowerPlay uh, Reporter. And I've seen, you know, some nice-looking things that would replace PowerPlay Explorer, but what about Impromptu, which gives us live data, and we do a lot of reports out of that, and we do a lot of dumping of data for additional reporting. And the Explorer, which we do a lot of stuff that has, you know, dates, columns of dates, yes. where we have January 2011 next to January 2012. I mean. How do you do that in something like this? Uh, that would have to be done in the application studio product. And, boy, that's a detailed question I have not thought about yet. Uh, I mean, I, we need to know what we're going to lose if we go to this. Uh, you would be able to control those dates. But now I know the application studio can either – application studio can write directly to the database to get the data directly out of it. So it could be a direct report writer. Uh, or it's it's more designed to use the cubes, but again the cubes are somewhat stale. Well, I'll call it stale data versus you know connecting live to the database. Uh, it could be ten minutes old or ten minutes old, but it would be considered somewhat stale. Um, that we'll have to follow up on. I know the person that asked that question was Dave Bryan, who's uh, my same role for the. Uh, the BI framework tools. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. We'll have to follow up with that one. I'll, you can ask, I'll, I'll see you. I'll, I'll ask. I'll find yeah. somebody when I come in. Yeah, I would hit Dinah with the question first, and then we can do a lot of investigation before you get there. And maybe, maybe if I have, uh, I will have access to this product. We can maybe do something live. Try to build something. Yeah, I mean, we need to be sure that we can get all the same information yeah. uh, as we would out of impromptu. And also, as we develop out of uh, the re PowerPlay Report Writer, because we okay. use that a lot. Yeah, the PowerPlay Report Writer, I think you're going to be fine with. It's that impromptu live data connection. Is that that's the one we need to focus in on? Uh, and then, how do you handle dates uh, pulling yeah. in and out? Because normally, Debbie, in the the date, all these different date creations that. Um, that this tool really has some nice controls over are coming out of the OLAP cube, which is not live connected to the database. So uh, we have some questions to ask on our people, our developers for that. But we understand your concern. So we can hit Dinah with it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll work on that between now and then uh, for that. Okay. Very good. Hey, Jerry, do you want to do a little bit of a plug for the uh, event in Columbus coming up here? Yeah, actually, we have the. Uh, let me get the. I want to make certain I had the right dates here. Hold on, just a second. Uh, it is here in just two weeks, I believe. Um, the dates are from. It is the Capitol, uh, the uh, Capitol Square Hotel in the Sheraton in downtown Columbus. It's the 25th anniversary of the Sun User Conference, uh, and it is from October 2nd through the 4th, uh, and we will have, of course, uh, with almost all Sun conferences, we'll have a live, uh, we'll have an expo area, and that's what I'm managing with live access to all the, the systems, so you can sit down and work with them. Uh, we'll have people there that can answer questions, 
or follow up with you and then find the answers if we can't answer them immediately. Uh, then there's going to be sessions throughout the day, and there will be events at night to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Sun Group. Uh, they have a, a, one's a music concert, um, and there's going to be, you know, you're in downtown Columbus. They've upgraded downtown Columbus quite a bit. If you're a gambler, there's full casinos there. Uh, hockey will be in town. I think that's the opening, unfortunately, I think that's the opening week for the NHL, uh, meaning there will be a lot more people down there than usual, uh, but it will be more activity. So, um, again, October 2nd through October 4th, celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Sun User Group. For that. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. And uh, so that would be recommended for uh, anyone on the call here that's got maybe some additional questions and such about BI to come down and see you in person uh, Absolutely. And, uh, and, and bug you right there. So, yep. well, folks, let's bring this right to the top of the hour here. And, uh, th Jerry, thank you again for, for representing the, uh, this great product here as we go forward. Got it. Uh, tomorrow, to wrap up the call, we've got a little bit of a bonus uh, coming up tomorrow. It's our new product configurator. And uh, you may have formerly known this as TDCI. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Infor acquired, the, uh, acquired TDCI. So that product now is right within the uh, the Infor family and, of course, plays a huge role in Sightline. So tomorrow, same time, same same place, uh, if you have a product that is configurable and you'd like to provide uh, that capability really uh, and, and grow it out to your, uh, your customer base and really earn some higher revenues from your uh, customers and, and reduce the costs of, of product configuration, uh, tomorrow's session will be extremely important to you. So uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And by the way, all of these presentations uh, are being recorded, and uh, links will be provided uh, sometime early next week uh, to the uh, to everyone who has attended. So again, thank you very much. And uh, Jerry, are you on the West Coast? No, I'm not out in the Californias. I'm still I'm here in Columbus. All right, very good. So uh, I know we've got a good event going on out there. So yeah. with that, I will close the call. Thank you, folks, uh, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for product configuration. Thank you.